Think for a minute about what you are seeing. Buildings, rivers, hills, roads, and the thousand details that identify a city. But what keeps all this information from being a meaningless jumble of colors and shapes? We take for granted how quickly and easily we can interpret visual images. But our ability to understand what we see is due to a vast store of knowledge built up over a lifetime of visual experience. We perceive this image as a city only when our knowledge of many visual rules is applied to it. Using visual knowledge, the human mind goes through a set of steps to interpret each new image for example, at the bottom of this cliff, we recognize a body of water. We use our knowledge to decide that it's a river, since it has two parallel banks. We then assume that this structure crossing it is a bridge, rather than a wharf or a frog. Our visual knowledge is the set of rules we use to make inferences like these when interpreting images. In many situations, it would be useful to have computers which can also interpret images. Computer image understanding systems could take the danger and tedium out of many tasks. For example, interpreting satellite photographs. Computers would be able to see as we do if they were given the powerful visual knowledge that we possess. Making computers which can see, however, means that visual knowledge can't just be taken for granted, but must be examined and carefully described. This film will identify some useful visual knowledge and describe a computer image understanding system which uses this knowledge. Fortunately, we live in a world which is relatively predictable. We assume that the visual properties of a particular scene will be basically the same each time we see it. This means we often make assumptions about the appearance of things that we don't actually see, since our knowledge tells us what to expect. Most of the time, we can identify familiar objects using the visual knowledge we have about them. We recognize blue as the color of the sky, or a rectangular shape as a building. We expect buildings to be adjacent to one another, and the sky to be positioned at the top of an image. So we see that some of our visual knowledge is derived from the properties which we associate with an object, like its color, shape, texture, and its relationship to objects around it. Size is another feature we associate with objects. Many scenes would look ambiguous to us if we did not use our knowledge about depth to choose the most likely interpretation. We expect a jet to be larger than a person, but when objects are viewed from a distance, relative size or perspective plays an important role in our perception of depth. Other powerful cues we use to choose an interpretation of a scene are occlusion, motion parallax, and shadow information. Consider what additional information we receive when we move in relation to objects in space. The trees in the foreground are moving faster across our field of view than the ones farther away. We interpret this information unconsciously, using the rule of motion parallax, which tells us the distance of a stationary object by how fast we pass it by. There are many informative cues in images which we use unconsciously. For instance, we aren't really aware how much we depend on the shadows that appear in an image. We can make sense of line drawings using occlusion or perspective but only shadows can reveal the true position of these boxes, one floating, 
the other two touching. We are dependent on our knowledge of the world to make sense of it. When presented with scenes that are inconsistent or outside our knowledge, the images we see confuse us. These two scenes are dramatically different, but we understand they are the same city by using our knowledge of day and nighttime contexts. Everyday events in the visual world have been incorporated into our knowledge as rules of what we can expect to see in different situations. Many more such rules could be listed. For example, the knowledge we use to focus our attention on the most informative parts of an image. Our seemingly effortless vision is really an involved process in which many sources of knowledge contribute to the final interpretation of an image. We have observed that because of the consistency of our world, knowledge creates expectations about what we see. These expectations eliminate the absurd interpretations of an image, making the understanding process faster and more accurate. For all these reasons, knowledge, although sometimes overlooked, is the most powerful component of our image understanding ability. Now that we have seen how important our visual knowledge is, it is clear that if computers are going to see, they will also have to possess a great deal of visual knowledge. Of course, simply identifying the relevant knowledge is not enough. Let's step back and look at the whole process of image understanding. There are four main issues concerning the application of knowledge to interpreting images. The identification of useful knowledge, the acquisition of this knowledge from various sources, the representation or translation of this knowledge into a suitable form, and finally, the search or matching of the knowledge to an unknown image, which leads to the interpretation. The computer situation is similar to that of a person who does not have enough knowledge to interpret a new scene and must somehow acquire this information. Look at that building. Oh, you mean the tall one? Yeah. What's it called? Oh, let me look at the map. These tourists would like to name the buildings in this view of downtown Pittsburgh. Well, but where are we? Uh, there's the fountain or the, yeah. the park and the, the park. bridge and the rivers going that way. They have identified the knowledge that is missing. That's where we are. That's where we right are. Right here. And have obtained a map of the city. Somewhere here. Let me see. Qu'est-ce que ça pourrait bien être? By changing the map information into a mental representation, they can begin to match parts of the image to their new knowledge. The search continues until they find a satisfactory interpretation. Computer image understanding systems must be capable of performing all of the processes which we take for granted in our vision. Not only should the most useful knowledge be identified, as we have done earlier, but the best source of this information and the most efficient representation must be chosen. This representation should allow the knowledge to be easily stored and found again when needed. Having done this much, the system is now ready to use its knowledge to interpret unknown images. These steps then take place. Raw visual information is identified, pre-processed, and then adapted into a representation which can easily be matched to the relevant knowledge. The final step is the search process, where knowledge and image meet. The tourists in Pittsburgh were searching for a match between two mental representations. One, their recently acquired map knowledge, and the other one, the image of the city. The result of this match is the final interpretation. Now that we have examined some visual knowledge and the steps of its application, 
Let's look at a computer system which illustrates both. The Argos Image Understanding System, designed at Carnegie Mellon University. We will describe the particular knowledge Argos uses to interpret photographs of downtown Pittsburgh. The Argos system does not start with the benefit of all our visual knowledge. A person, even in an unfamiliar city, can recognize the sky and the building. Argos, however, must be told the sky is blue, along with other color and shape descriptions of city images. To a computer without even this simple knowledge, images are just meaningless jumbles of colored dots. Starting with some shape and texture information, Argos builds its knowledge of city scenes. Such knowledge is represented as lists of numbers on various scales. However, this knowledge by itself is inadequate for interpreting images of this city. Argos still has no knowledge of depth or of the specific layout of the city. Both of these are acquired from a map of downtown Pittsburgh. Combined with a list of building heights, the map sets each building in its context and is translated into a three-dimensional representation of the city in the computer's memory. Each projected view contains many kinds of knowledge. This knowledge is further adapted by the computer into a network representation. Networks from different views of the city are then collapsed into one large network to get rid of redundancy. Each path through the network corresponds to a possible view of the city. When this network is combined with all previously acquired knowledge, Argos has a single, powerful knowledge representation with which to work. This is where the actual image understanding begins. First, the visual structure of the unknown image must be identified using color, shape, and texture information. This information is adapted into a form which can be matched to parts of the knowledge representation. If the system only had to know about three different buildings, the search for a match to an unknown image would be easy. In the Pittsburgh city scene, there are 58 different buildings in many combinations from differing viewpoints. It is here that the predictability of much visual knowledge helps to drastically cut down the possible choices for a match. The Argo search procedure, called Locus Search, uses the map knowledge where each building has only a few possible neighbors to eliminate impossible matches. Every knowledge source can be used to cut down the time it takes to search for a good match. When the system finds a satisfactory match between this image and the knowledge network, the final interpretation is produced. Argos has interpreted this unknown image by the skillful application of powerful visual knowledge. The Argos Image Understanding System 
is a step towards the effective utilization of contextual knowledge in the interpretation of complex scenes. From pre-segmented images such as these, Argos correctly recognizes 80 to 95 percent of all segments. For example, in the final interpretation of this scene, 37 out of 39 possible regions were identified correctly. The distinguishing characteristic of Argus is the way it represents and uses knowledge in scene analysis. Many real-world problems, such as satellite image interpretation, require the effective use of all the available sources of information. Future image understanding systems can be expected to interpret even more complex images by increasing the size and scope of their visual knowledge sources. Success of these systems will depend on advances in system design and on new approaches to representation and search. However, knowledge, its acquisition and utilization will always be central to any system. The more we learn about visual knowledge, the better we will understand computer vision and eventually our own visual perception processes.